Hello, folks, and welcome to a screencast lecture on the articulations of the human skeleton, otherwise known as the joints of the body. Now, if I asked you to point to a particular joint of the body, you might use your finger, your wrist, elbow, shoulder, or even your hip. There certainly are joints, but there are some joints that you probably hadn't considered. An articulation or a joint is anywhere two bones come together. We've classified them into three different types based on how they're put together, that is their structure. The way they're put together provides them with a certain amount of movability. The first is called a fibrous joint. These are immovable. Another name for an immovable joint is a synarthrotic joint. These joints are so named because fibers of collagen actually hold the two bones together. Examples of these would be sutures in the skull. You might remember that an infant skull actually had a membrane in between the plates of the skull. And as the skull matured, these bones fused together. They have no longer moved, but there are fibers holding them together. Another example of a joint is a cartilaginous joint. These are slightly movable because there's a pad of fibrocartilage separating the two bones and that fibrocartilage allows for a little bit of motility. An example of this would be the intervertebral joints of the spine. The intervertebral discs are made of fibrocartilage and as you'll remember there's a pulpy center inside of these discs that allow these these bones to move slightly. Another example of a cartilaginous joint in the body is where the two pubic bones come together in the pelvic girdle. This is known as the symphysis pubis where there's a little pad of fibrocartilage as well, and the sacroiliac joint between the sacrum and the iliac of the os coxa. The third type of joint is a synovial joint or freely movable. Another name for a freely movable joint is a diarthrotic joint. Here's a picture of a generic synovial joint of the body. It's so named because of a synovial membrane that lines the joint cavity. Synovial membrane is actually a double membrane. It's more like an underinflated water balloon that's jammed in between the two bones. This synovial membrane creates a fluid on its in interior called the synovial fluid. The synovial fluid is slightly viscous or slippery and it reduces the, reduces the friction in the joint, allowing it to move a little bit more freely. What also allows the bones to move nicely together is this articular cartilage, which is a layer of hyaline cartilage covering the ends of these long bones. And lastly, we have ligaments. Ligaments are what hold bones to bone in a joint. Now there are lots of different kinds of synovial joints. What makes each one different is the type of movement allowed. So we've actually categorized these six subclasses of synovial joints. The first we'll look at is a ball and socket joint. The shoulder or glenohumeral joint is the best example of this. The head of the humerus creates a ball that fits nicely into the socket or the glenoid cavity of the, of the scapula. This type of joint is the most freely movable joint in the body and allows for a movement called circumduction, which we'll demonstrate in lab class. The hip joint, where the femur articulates with the os coxa, is also a ball and socket joint. It's not nearly as freely movable as the shoulder joint because of all the muscularity of that joint. Another subclass of a synovial joint is a hinge joint. Hinge joints allow movements in one plane, sort of an opening and closing, or in the elbow, the flexion and extension of the elbow. This is like the hinge on a door. Next is a condyloid joint, so named because of the round, large rounded features or condyles at the ends of bones. Here you're looking at a posterior view of the knee. The distal end of the femur has two large round condyles that fit into grooves atop the tibia. When the knee flexes, these condyles appear to roll inside of those grooves of the tibia. We'll look a little bit more closely at the knee joint later. A pivot joint exists between the head of the radius and a notch on the ulna near the elbow joint. The head of the radius can pivot on its axis. Another pivot joint exists between the first cervical vertebrae 
the atlas, and the second cervical vertebrae, the axis. The atlas pivots on top of the axis. And finally, the saddle joint exists between the trapezium bone, that's a carpal bone in the wrist, and the metacarpal of the thumb. The metacarpal of the thumb sits like a rider in the saddle on top of the trapezium bone. And then we have a gliding joint. The short bones of the carpals and those in the foot called the tarsals slide back and forth with respect to one another in sort of a gliding movement. Now let's take a look, closer look at a particular joint, the knee. This is just going to be an introduction to the knee because there are a lot more that are, there's a lot more to the knee that's not shown in this picture. Here, you see the knee is slightly flexed. We have the femur bone here. The patella normally sits right smack dab in the middle of this joint, but it's peeled away here. So here's the patella. It would have cartilage on its posterior surface here. Here's a groove that the patella glides up and down in as the knee flexes and extends, called the patellofemoral groove. On the inside of the knee is a ligament in the posterior aspect that crosses over another one. This is called the posterior cruciate ligament. Many of the ligaments in the knee are abbreviated. This one would be called the PCL. Another ligament called the tibial collateral ligament, but more often called the medial collateral ligament, would be abbreviated the MCL. What's also in the knee are two pads of fibrocartilage that cushion the knee and also help stabilize it because they, they form a cup that holds the condyle in place. Here is the medial collateral ligament, so named because it's on the medial aspect of the knee. Here's the tibia and the fibula and the fibular collateral ligament, sometimes known more often known as the lateral collateral ligament, or the LCL. Here's the lateral meniscus, another pad of cartilage. One thing to note here is that the meniscus is that cartilage in the knee that athletes can tear in an injury. The articular cartilage usually is not the cartilage that's torn. Here's the distal femoral condyle, covered in articular cartilage. And here's the anterior cruciate ligament, otherwise known as the ACL. I think that's a good introduction of the articulations of the human skeleton. So I'll stop there. There's much more to learn in class. If you have any questions, write them down. And until then, we'll see you in class.